Hello and welcome to the Food Fight Show. My name is Nathan Harvey. I am your host today. Uh, today we have a really, really exciting episode. I'm really excited to bring this to you. Today we're going to be talking about Learn Chef Rally. Now, Learn Chef Rally is, in my mind, the number one place for anyone to go and learn about how to do things with Chef, learn about uh, DevOps and sort of their journey towards continuous automation. I've been involved with Learn Chef since it was an idea on a whiteboard. Uh, luckily, I'm not really involved very heavily in it anymore because it's taken on a huge life of its own that's really exciting. Such an enormous life, in fact, that uh, we relaunched it at ChefConf this year back in May. And part of the reason we're having this episode right now is because this week we passed a pretty big milestone with Learn Chef. In fact, we hit 10,000 users subscribing and, and, and learning on the Learn Chef Rally site, which is, uh, well, frankly, it's pretty fucking awesome. Uh, whoops, there we go with our adult rating right at the beginning of the show. But really, thank you to everyone who's using Learn Chef and anyone who's considering using Learn Chef. We definitely encourage you to do so. All right, now, without much further ado, I would love to get to our list of panelists today and do some introductions. So I'm going to kick it over first to Creighton. Creighton, welcome to the show. Would you mind introducing yourself for us? Yeah, so uh, my name is Creighton, I, uh, Creighton Medley. I, uh, I work at Lexmark. Um, we are uh, becoming a new chef customer, so we went through the, the uh, chef training, and um, I think that's why I'm, why I'm here today. That's awesome. Welcome to the show. Uh, Thomas, over to you next. Hey, Nathan. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name's uh, Tom Petchel. I'm the technical content lead for uh, the Learn Chef site. Um, I've been with Chef for three and a half years um, to the day, in fact. It's been exactly three and a half years. Um, I've been in uh, technical content for 12 years now, and before that I was a software developer in the online gaming space. Um, I'm a Pennsylvania native. I uh, lived in Seattle for about 15 years, and uh, now I'm located in Sarasota, Florida, and I live with my wife and two daughters. Awesome. Thanks for coming on the show today, Tom. And, and thank you for everything you do to make Learn Chef so awesome. Uh, Andrew, how about you next? Hey, Nathan. Uh, it's nice to meet you and everybody else. Um, so I am currently in Mullingar in Ireland, uh, the home of Joe Dolan and Niall Horn from One Direction. Uh, I work in Dublin and I commute up and down. So it was a really handy way to knock out the, the modules and tracks on LearnChef was commuting up and down. Um, so I, I joined Workday in Dublin in June and I'm a software developer and I uh, write a lot of Chef for Workday and previous to Workday I worked for Fidelity Investments and um, I used Chef quite a bit there too. Um, I would have joined in 2012. So um, for me, like using Chef Rally was a great way to get up to date with the latest best practices and identifying my weaknesses. <laughs> oh, that's super awesome. And thank you very much for joining us. I know it's pretty late in Dublin and on a Friday to boot. I hope there's a Guinness sitting next to you. I can smell it. I can smell it. It's yeah, wafting right. up the stairs. <laughs> Excellent. And then next up on our list of panelists today, uh, my good friend, Frank Weber. Hey, Frank, how's it going? Hello. Hello, Nathan. Hi. Um, so yeah, my name is Franklin Weber. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the same name, uh, but Weber with two B's, kind of like Nathan with an E. I'm sort of an oddball in that way. Um, I live in Viroqua, Wisconsin. Uh, it's about a town of 4,352 people. It's somewhere on the left-hand side, uh, and I'm lactose intolerant. So it's not a lot of fun, <laughs> it's not a lot of fun uh, all the time for me. Um, I am a college dropout. And I'm a trainer at Chef. Awesome. Well, we're really uh, excited to have you on the show today, Frank. Thanks. All right. So, uh, look, we're here to talk about Learn Chef Rally. And I think the best way for us to get started on that maybe is to ask Thomas to give us sort of an overview and an in introduction to just what is Learn Chef Rally. Tom, you want to take that one? Yeah, sure. So um, first of all, um, where, where is Learn Chef Rally? It's at learn.chef.io. Um, and you know, the way I think about it is it's a great resource for leveling up your chef skills. So if you're a new user, you can come into the site and we get you started very quickly. 
um, then you might go off and find some other resources, explore on your own, and you can always keep coming back and find, you know, deeper and deeper content to kind of expand your skills. Um, you know, with, from talking with users, I kind of see that they fall under um, one of two kind of groups or camps. You know, there's the group that, um, you know, knows they want to use Chef. So maybe they've read about it, they've seen a demo, maybe a friend told them about it. Um, you know, maybe they joined a team that uses Chef and, and Learn Chef for Hours is a way to, to get in and, and get started quickly. Um, then there's the other camp that maybe is more focused on or wants to learn more about DevOps. And because, you know, Chef implements a lot of DevOps principles and practices, right, it's kind of a way of exploring DevOps kind of through the, through the Chef lens. Well, that's cool. So you can learn about not just Chef skills, but also DevOps stuff. What sort of DevOps topics are available there? Like contributing the to the principle. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, sorry. Yeah, I was going to uh, say that contributing to the community. There's a section on that that um, you know would fall under maybe the soft skills, but it's definitely worthwhile. Yes. Right. I think, yeah. There is that one, and and also there's kind of like the the principle of um, you know expressing your infrastructure as code. Um, you know, there's there's multiple ways to do that, and and Chef is one of them. Um, and you know, there's the idea of um, you know, deploying often and in small batches, you know, Chef can help you do that as well. That's cool. So it's really about some of the concepts that you need and then the technical skills to back those up as well. Nathan, can, can we have a moment though for, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, Creighton, you said you just went through the training and yep. Andrew, you have used Learn Chef Rally. I want to have like that geezer moment for those <laughs> of us that, I mean, I sat in a class with you, Nathan, you taught me Chef. Um, I was fortunately a Ruby developer when I showed up in that class. Um, so like when I saw it, I was like, yeah, this is just, you've got some crazy functions just sitting on top of everything you've written. I get it. But like from my experience, oh man, before Learn Chef Rally, it was go to the docs. And then that wasn't really scenario driven. And I think that's something that's like from, from an old timer, I'm like, you kids have it so easy. <laughs> it's so nice. I just had to get that done with. That was, it was, it was going to fester the whole conversation if I didn't It's say good. It. It's good to get that out in the open early in, in the relationship. Yeah. So when I, when I went through it, um, and I went through it recently, the, uh, you know, some of the videos that helped the most are the ones that, that Franklin did um, because he actually, with the, with the wig on, you had the wig, the, um, yeah, know, that was the wig. Lost first. Like, oh yeah. Okay. You're the, you're the wig guy. Um, those really helped a lot because, um, you thought through the problem, you know, it was, it was watching somebody think through the problem and then um, just code it and then go through and then refactor it. And um, those videos I found really, really helpful. Um, the, the tests were nice too. Like actually the, the whole thing is good. Um, but that really resonated because it was like a, uh, it was like a pairing session, right? You know, like just, but watching. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good part of the videos. I think the hard part, to kind of jump into sort of thinking about the training and the material. Yeah, because my, my face shows up in a lot of the videos for the later, more advanced topics, because that's, you know, the, what we had, what we've gotten written out. And um, it also, it works, yeah, because at that point, um, I, I assume a lot of things when I do those recordings. I assume you know quite a bit of chef. And I don't have to be so exact uh, when I'm doing them uh, to get it right the first time. And I think that's something that's hard because uh, both LearnShift probably has those, but then it also has a more exact content for earlier on. So we've got like those tutorials early on, which I think do a good job of kind of preparing you for the videos later. Cause I wouldn't want to be the one kind of pairing you through <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> me wearing so, the big wig. And, you know, I watched one last night. I think I was like high or exhausted from like newbornness or something like that. I was like, what is going on? Eventually I made sense, but you know, I rambled for quite like this moment, you know, for quite often there. Well, so when I started on the, on the chef, well, I was a Ruby developer before, so I've done Ruby for a long time. So I, I had the same experience coming with chef. When I first started after we had the class, I, I went to get books and um, some of the books I got were just outdated and that was definitely frustrating. So then when I landed on Learn Chef, that was what was really good is because um, it put into context everything that we had already gone through. You know, we, we had like a um, chef, um, not sh yeah, chef came on site and we did a dirt, let basic essentials or that, that first workshop. So we had that going. 
Um, but like I said, some of the stuff we learned in class wasn't in the books. It, like the books were like just not working. You know, they, they weren't work. They were older, right? Like it seemed like it's changed. Um, but yeah, Learn Chef was really good. And when I went through all of Learn Chef, at the very end, there was one that was added for spinning up Chef Automate. It was like one of the later classes. That one was really nice because then you just got everything right away in a Docker container. It's like, how easy is that? Like you didn't have to go through all the, you know, you didn't have to go through everything. It would have been nice to have that one in the very beginning, but, um, but it was good, you know, like afterwards. Great. That's really cool to hear yeah. sort of your experience where you started with an instructor led offering in a classroom and then you went into learn chef and also it's cool to hear that you had a background uh, as a Ruby developer. So Andrew, I wonder if you could sort of share your, your back a little bit about your background and how you first came to learn chef as well. Sure. Yeah. So um, I guess um, after I finished college for a couple of years, I worked as a sysadmin in a HPC center in Ireland. Um, and so it's pretty traditional sysadmin role. Um, and at the time, a lot of my colleagues were starting to look in a puppet <laughs> and, uh, uh, I was sort of in between learning puppet, learning a little bit of chef. And then, uh, I got a job with Fidelity as a software developer and we used chef heavily for our deployment and as, as part of the tool that we, we built. So uh, for a large part, I was self-taught. Um, and I guess back then I definitely felt overwhelmed. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of uh pieces to chef that you need to fit in your head um it's a really flexible tool but sometimes that flexibility can tie in in knots so learning you know the difference between a node and a client and a user and attributes and attribute precedence and roles and environments and there's it's it's a really powerful tool but as i said yeah you can tie yourself in a knot so um i went through the kind of typical path of writing uh chef recipes that looked an awful lot like a bash script with just a giant execute resource um, with no tests. <laughs> and uh, then over time, uh, writing uh, server spec. And then um, uh, I guess really, I, I haven't written a whole lot of in spec until I did the Chef Rally course. So it was really interesting to, I know I'd, I'd, I'd heard about it and it was kind of one of those things in the back burner. And um, it was really interesting to, to learn it without having to be, 100% self-taught, self like with having Franklin step through, you know, test-driven development and writing the test first and um, getting it to pass. Um, it was, yeah, like uh, Creighton said, like it's, it, it really felt like a pair programming exercise. Um, so that was really useful. Um, and I guess as, as somebody who, you know, even though I still write Chef, I, you know, part of my responsibility is adminning a Chef server. Um, I found that uh, module really use, really interesting. Um, so there's there's a module there with some of the engineers who were involved in the architectural decisions of Chef Server and the history of the different components. And um, that's uh, you know it was a really interesting webinar that helps me as as an admin better understand where the the Chef Server's uh, scaling points are. So I found that really really interesting. Yeah, that's, that's super cool. And um, there's certainly something to be said for sort of uh, going on this self-taught journey to learn Chef. I know certainly when I, when I learned Chef, like we didn't even have docs, we had a wiki. That was about it. Uh, you know, so if I can get even grumpier and older than Franklin, you know, uh, so to, you know, but, um, and, and some of us sort of wear that as a badge of honor, but it needn't be that way, right? We should, we should have ways for you to learn chef that's much easier. And I think that learn chef is a great testament to that. Uh, and then Creighton, you mentioned that, you know, you went out and bought books and man, in our space, the, the challenge with books is by the time, by the time they ship, they're kind of out of date, right? Everything is moving so, so fast. So we really like a, a site like Learn Chef is a really great place to sort of capture all of the best lessons that we've learned over the years. You know, Franklin and I have both taught Chef and, and Tom for a long, long time. And certainly our approach to how do we help people get successful? How do we help people retain what they're learning has changed over those years. Tom, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about sort of uh, the inside baseball of Learn Chef. So how do we, how do, how do you keep it up to date? How do you, you know, ensure that we are pushing out those best practices and things like that? Yeah, yeah, right. So, um, you know, as we were adding more and more content to the site, I found that it was harder and harder to keep up with all the changes, right? 
And it's not just a, not just chef changes, right? It's changes to the ecosystem and kind of related tools that chef works with. So um, I, I'm proud of writing this, but I wrote um, kind of a test automation framework, right? That um, will replay the, the tutorials automatically. So um, how it kind of boils down to is it's a, um, a collection of chef cookbooks and I have custom resource types and they um, replay the commands and, and add the code gradually as you, you know, work through the scenario. And um, I have um, a set of Terraform plans then too that'll, that'll bring up infrastructure to run the scenario and then replay the cookbooks. And then what I get at as output is um, these little kind of snippet files, I call them, that, the, that LearnChef can consume. So then when we, when we rev Chef Client or Chef Server or InSpec or even you know, when VirtualBox or Vagrant um, rev, we can just run the test automation and get kind of fresh output. And another benefit to that is too, is like if the run fails, like that tells me that something might have changed, right? And that's often because maybe, you know, we've made something better or changed the way a command works, right? And I can spot that right away and kind of keep the content as, as fresh as possible, right? Made something better in air quotes, right? <laughs> yeah, and I'll, I'll say like, again, being sort of on the inside and having a, a, a team uh, of developers around me that helps sort of push out and release those new components, both within Chef and, and some within the ecosystem, you know, learn Chef and your, your tests actually can be sort of a leading indicator of whether or not we have issues within, you know, a Chef client release or a test kitchen release. So thanks for having that because it does raise issues much, much earlier than we might have otherwise found them. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and one way you could have approached it too is just to kind of run the final result, right? Through some type of test automation, but that doesn't kind of show you like all the steps that lead up to that, right? Ensuring that all the steps um, that you go through kind of, you know, give you the, the result. Yeah, uh, Thomas, this sounds like a good module that should be added to Learn Chef. <laughs> like how to create this because uh, when you talk about it and you know I'm just going for like the cheap uh, one hour I can record with a wig on um, you're putting together some automation uh, I think that's like so it's solid man like it keeps things going I just had to re-record a video that was a testing webinar um, the TDD webinar I did last year because it had server spec in it like you were talking to Andrew and it, I needed to update it to make sure it talked about inspect. So I didn't have automation to replay me. Um, so it, sometimes the words are better to have those around and tools definitely for that. Yeah, if I can only get my test automation to update videos and, and screenshots, right? Those are super painful too to keep up to date. Yeah. Um, a, a funny thing is my, um, the test repo, I had it just as a public repo. And then I found that people were, you know, mentioning my issues that I had in my test repo. like on Learn Chef, like in the discussion forum and in other places, I'm like, oh, that doesn't feel good. So I temporarily, um, it's private right now, but I should probably think about opening that back up. Yeah. Yeah, so Franklin, you said a word there, uh, module. Uh, so I know that when I go to the Learn Chef page, I see tracks and I see modules. And Tom, maybe you could talk through sort of the, what's the layout? What's, how do I approach Learn Chef? Yeah, so there's, maybe two ways to slice that, right? One is, you know, what do you want to learn about? And you can think about it, um, you know, one way to think about it is, what are Chef's open source projects, right? So there's Chef, and there's Inspec, and there's Habitat, and then there's our commercial offering, you know, Chef Automate. Um, so many of the modules map to one of those technologies, right? Um, and, and some of them are cross-cutting too. Um, and then another way to think about it is, you know, how do you, how do you like to learn? So, you know, I mentioned before that um, Learn Chef Rally is very practitioner focused, right? So many of the modules kind of follow that traditional tutorial format, right? So we lay out a scenario um, and then, it's, you know, do this step, then add this code, then, then run this command, then add this code and kind of repeat that, right? Um, but then some people really like, you know, video content, right? So they might be more attracted to things that like Franklin and others have, have published. Um, I'd recommend for, and, and I've, I know that many users do this, they'll, when they come to the site for the first time, they might not just jump into something, but they'll explore the different tracks that are offered and kind of see what they're about before they kind of approach any of them. That's cool. Andrew, maybe you could talk about how you approached LearnChef. Did you, you know, pick and choose? Did you go down a track? How, what, what was your approach? Um, a little bit of both. Um, so I sort of, uh, 
looked at the the tracks that were available and and sort of things that I was interested in in reviewing. So um, I I actually hadn't written a custom resource in the new way in twelve six. So that was one that jumped at at me straight away. Was was uh, customizing Chef. Um, so you know I jumped into that and then. Probably before I finished it, I jumped into the local development and testing, <laughs> um, which uh, I think I said before, you know, I found really helpful for getting up to speed with like the latest best practices for developing and for, for testing um, cookbooks. And then really it was, it was sort of um, pick and choose. And, and um, I don't like uh, not having boxes ticked so I, once i went through the content that i enjoyed the most i sort of went back and and went through everything and there was things that um i had skipped that i actually found nuggets of really useful information in that i, I hadn't thought about um and that's that's sort of how how i went through it thank you cool. what about chef rally brings out the ocd in all of us yeah <laughs> gotta, gotta scratch that gotta box. get them all gotta collect them all and that's kind of the, the gamification yeah. aspect of it right and that, yeah, that maybe you could talk a little bit about the badges that we have on Learn Chef. Yeah, sure. So um, every track um, has an associated badge, and you earn that badge when you've completed all the modules. And you get credit for completing a module when you successfully answer all the quiz questions that we have um, at the end of each page. Um, we also have two, um, well, so far, two limited edition badges. Um, when we first opened the Learn Chef Rally site, kind of the refresh at ChefConf this year in May, uh, we had a grand opening badge. And all you had to do was come into the site, um, create an account or sign in, uh, complete one module, and then you, you've earned the grand opening badge. And then right now we're offering the, um, we have the, the 10,000 user food fight badge. And it's the same thing there. You just have to sign in, complete a module, and you've earned your badge. And that's running until uh, October 6th, I believe. Right, and, so you've got to hurry up. It, uh, if you're listening to this, it might be October 5th already. So yeah. hurry up and log in and get that badge. While it's it a food fight badge. Does it have like a little Nathan head? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's, like a, it's like a pizza and a hot dog with boxing gloves, right? <laughs> they're, they're very well-designed badges. Like they look good. I like the Neapolitan popsicle too with the, with the bite taken out of it. They are definitely- Whoever active. designed it did a good job on the, on the, on the design. We have a good design team helping us out with that for sure. And I, I guess, um, you know, so when they initially started talking about the badge system, I'm kind of the, I don't like, I feel like I, 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 I'm opposed to certain things. I'm like, that's not gonna work. Like mm, badges, we always talk about them. It's not gonna incentivize people, um, but it does, right? Like it, it does work. And then um, there are people that love it. I think another thing that I sort of, when you don't look at it pessimistic or like, oh, they're trying to incentivize them. What am I gonna get at? digital little sticker doesn't, I can't show it to the family, you know, or something, or they don't care. Um, I think the other benefit you really do see though, is that you get to chart your progress. So it's not just like, I'm having this trouble. I'm learning a little bit of, you know, some technology. And when I'm reading through the pages, I read through it, but I don't know if like I remembered, learned, or even read that page the next day. I'm like, I kind of remember. So just having like that, like I answer the question to check the box. I know that I've explored these pieces. Uh, it's just super useful to kind of like be more mindful with like when you're practicing or when you're spending that time learning something. Cause you know, like I did that. Um, I went through that tutorial, I checked it off, I answered the question, so. By the way, Thomas, yeah, like, really hard. like Andrew said, I, I got through, I got going with the set completion too. Like I just wanted to get all, all the way through. This is one of the few times I've actually started from the very beginning and just went in a linear direction when I was learning. So I just started with module one, track one, just kept through the whole thing. But what it did different is we, the rest of the team also was going through Learn Chef. So then we would send our progress through, you know, to, at, at the end of the day or at the end of the week or whatever. And um, just basically racing to see who could get through, you know, the, the whole thing. So that was, that was fun. I mean, I, yeah, I was thinking about that, like you could use it when we talk about like professional growth plans or you're talking to your manager, you're talking about the, just even like your peers of like, am, you know, am I making progress in the things that I want to do? I think it's just like a super awesome way to, to represent it, to be able to say like, yep, here it is. I've completed this thing. So 
I, I think that'd be a great, like if I was thinking about if I was working for a company, we're using chef and I wanted to illustrate to, yeah, my, my boss or something like that, like my manager to say, Hey, I'm doing, I'm learning here. Like I'm trying to be, you know, improve myself. You could demonstrate it instead of like, yeah, I totally know more chef. Right. Like that doesn't work, but like flash on a website or two screen grab. I had a funny anecdote about the, the 10,000 uh, user event. Um, so we saw that we we're quickly approaching 10,000 users and we, you know, like, oh, let's have an event for this. And what we we're planning to do is kind of frame it around like we're approaching 10,000 users quickly and we wanted to give out a prize to that 10,000th user, right? But before we can act on it, before we can like plan or do anything, like we blew past 10,000 users. So like, oh, what do we do now? So we kind of reframed it as, oh, well, we've, we've hit 10,000 users, so let's celebrate for a few weeks. We should celebrate all 10,000 of them, not just the 10,000th, right? So that's, that's right, exactly. And, and speaking of you know, recognizing users, um, we're, we're ra also randomly selecting users um, for the next two weeks to uh, receive a small prize from, from the LearnChef team. And, and I don't even know what it is, but it's awesome. <laughs> that's cool. Hey, so we talk about this idea of tracking your progress and earning badges. And you know, the thing that we didn't mention there was, uh, it's kind of an, maybe an assumed thing, I have to sign up for an account in order to do all of that. So uh, do I have to sign up for an account to get access to all of this content? So no, you don't. <laughs> it's all freely available whether you're um, signed in or not. And a cool thing is you can still track your progress even if you don't have an account with us. We, we store all that data in your, in your local storage, right? But you can kind of see some problems there, right? So if you start a module while you're at work and then complete it when you go home, maybe, like your browsers aren't synced, right? Or if you clear your browser cache, like unfortunately all of your progress is gone, right? Um, but a cool thing is like, if you're not sure if you want to create an account, you can start going through the modules and start earning progress and you'll kind of see it. And then when you do create an account, we'll synchronize everything you've done. So you don't have to like repeat anything to, um, you know, to, to get the credit that you've earned so you don't lose your hard work. Yeah, that's a good point. And I think, um, yeah, if you're not into that thing and you feel like you got to wear a tin hat while going through the tutorials or something like that, like it, it really is like, it's all the web, like it's all our webinars which are on one site. It's like a bunch of like core information that would normally be on a docs and like spread everywhere else in one site. It's all the YouTube videos that are posted all in one site. So like, it really just is a nice consolidation of everything. And it's been softly laid out is what I think, you know, as far as like the, the content, and what we tried to do with it. Yeah, it also kind of addresses the, the needs of the learner, right? Each and every one of us has uh, like a different style of learning. Some of us just want to consume a video or we watch, you know, or we watch you, Franklin, in a wig and, and learn from that. Some of us want to walk step by step, you know, directly through a track. Pick and, pick and choose here and there, like whatever. So I wonder if we could talk about uh, some of your favorite modules or maybe even Tom, maybe some of your least favorite modules because they're so hard to test and validate and they always seem to break. Uh, Andy, you mentioned uh, what about um, managing the chef server. Yeah. Creighton, do you have uh, any particular modules or tracks that come to mind as like standout ones for you? Well, yeah. I'll, I'll... I like the one. I like the uh, writing the chef cookbooks that that Franklin did, and then and then refactoring them. Th those those helped a lot. Um, the inspect in when I found inspect inspect's awesome. Like that was that was a lot of fun. And then um, I also like the um, in trying to sell chef within the corporation. The uh, case studies were really helpful. Um, going through and looking at how other customers were using it, and then reached out to those you know the people that were listed in the in the uh, in the art in the in the feed or in the, in the article rather, and um, was able to get a lot more information from them as well. Um, that was unbiased, right? It was like straight from, you know, uh, another customer, right? So th that was really helpful. All from LearnChef. What about you, Tom? Gosh, one thing I hate is content that we don't have, right? Just that we don't quite have the resources to create yet. And, and a common ask is, so, so most of the site assumes that you have like unfettered internet access, right? And can, can touch the cloud, can, can, can go anywhere, right? But you know, a lot of people work in air gapped and you know, environments and from behind the firewall. So I just wish we had like some more of that content that people are asking for. And we do have a roadmap that we prioritize and that's something that I'd love to, to get out there. Um, maybe another 
um, module or track that I've kind of a love hate relationship with is with anything that has to do with chef automate. And the reason I say that is because um, when we first launched in November of what was it 2015, right? Um, you know, everyone was just so heads down, like getting the final touches on it, right. And getting it working. So like no one had time for me to like really kind of walk, walk me through it and kind of tell me about it. So I remember spending, and I look back at it affectionately, but I mean, there's a lot of like, you know, 18, 20 hour days there for a week. They're trying to get this, you know, working and stuff. So it's just like, I, I feel like I've earned, right. That I understand how it works and then how to operate it. Right. And that's something that we've kind of carried through and improved over time. So I, I love the result. It was a little bit, um, Maybe tricky getting there. Uh, another another track that I also like too is the um, you know anything that's foundational, just because that's where most users go, um, so it gets a lot of attention. Um, in particular, like our our infrastructure auto or infrastructure automation track, right? And that's kind of like the bread and butter, like how do you get started with Chef track? And the thing I like about that is is um, each of the modules you there's kind of variations to them. So when you come into the module, you pick, hey, like what, what server platform do I care about managing, right? And Chef works on, you know, a lot of different systems, but we, we offer, you know, Red Hat, Windows, Server, and Ubuntu. And the content behind it is similar. It's just they, they're kind of very narrowly focused just on that, that platform, right? So if we're going to, you know, motivate an example using, you know, setting up a web server, you know, on the Linux variations, you'll work with Apache. And then on the Windows variation, you'll work with IIS, right? And then after you choose the platform that you care about, then there's an additional layer there where you pick up where you do want to run your systems, right? You can run it on a VM and the cloud and all these different environments, right? So folks can get, you know, up and working very quickly, like in the environment and on the platform they, they really care about. That's that matrix you're talking about, right? Which is yes, the and platforms times the, yeah. Target that's elements. where uh, that's where like my test thing you know save my ass right because I can write the cookbook once that models it and then all these terraform plans and, and off I go I can I can validate it works everywhere yeah it's uh, also it's also helpful for people who are friend who like Linux and people who like Windows um, because our team is mixed and um, and there's not there's very few that do both um, so that was really good because that depending on who you were and what you liked, you could choose either to go the, for most of the courses, you know, either go, um, I want to set it up with, you know, Vagrant or set it up with in the cloud or set it with Windows, like which platform are you are you using? Um, that's a lot, that's a ton of content. Like, I, that's impressive, like to put all that together and, um, you know, just be able to work with it the way that you want to work with it. Um, yeah, so good, good job. Andrew, you got a favorite? Yeah, I mean, ditto that. Like, um, I rem when I started with Chef, like I said, it was pretty difficult to get my head around a lot of things. Even installing the Chef client and doing stuff locally was challenging. And I think that there's been, as a user of Chef, like there's, I've definitely noticed a history of um, really caring about how people use the tool, how to make life easier. Um, Chef DK came along and just suddenly overnight made life a lot easier on uh, the Omnibus. Um, and I think the Learn Chef Rally site is just a continuation of that pattern, right? Is how, you know, what, if somebody wants to get, get up and going, what's the, the easiest way for them to consume it, right? Like it's, um, it's yeah, it's, it's really impressive. Uh, my favorite modules, my favorite module right now is the Habitat module I'm writing. Um, I'm just, just really enjoying it. Like, uh, I spent the last two weeks or two weeks ago, finished some video series of like how to make, how to take a Ruby application that puts your face into a habitat container, um, and makes it like a website that you can serve up. Um, and normally like that website would be pretty simple. You know, you run it locally, but then you give it to someone and then they go, I don't have image magic. I don't have Ruby. I only do. Um, but you can put it in the container, you know, I'm like, here's my habitat package and I put it in my container. Anyways, uh, I'm writing that into a tutorial, like a longer tutorial that explains a lot more of what's going on. So that's my current favorite one because habitat is definitely a lot of fun these days. Um, but my other are the certification prep modules that they have. Um, cause, so like a after the videos that I did for the joy of automating, what I really liked was that Brian Turner and our team was like, he was saying, Hey, you should, add these sort of challenges at the end 
of each one of these exercises. Don't just do the video, uh, watch people do the, you know, you do the activity and hope they do it with you. Provide some additional ac activities afterwards that they might want to take it further. And the certification prep modules are like that, just like they are full. Here's an example of an application to do. So you've done all these other videos. Now try and build this that we've outlined for you. Um, and having taken some of the certification prep or the certification exams, um, you know, the language is pretty similar. The activity is pretty similar. Um, and they're just like good, challenging, fun things like, you know, that you're struggling with, like you need a pet project to do, like it's a good start. So you mentioned there's certification. Uh, does Learn Chef do a sufficient job to prepare anyone for, like, completely for the certification, do you think? And, and, and then maybe a, a pre-question instead of a follow-up question is, what do you mean certification? What types of certification do we have? Yeah. Um, I'd love to talk more about that. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. You might be uh, pulling up a browser right now. Yeah, like, could it get it? No, the, um, I mean, let's talk about the truth of like, uh, so we have several badges similar to the badges that are on our site that we offer. Um, and I think the important part is like, does, that, does the website prepare you for the different badges and the different levels that we have um, in terms of certification? And I think the answer is no. Like, I mean, if um, I was thinking about this, uh, this question particularly, uh, if I was someone in a company working by myself, kind of just doing the chef thing, trying to make stuff happen, um, you might have a harder time um, if you're just doing, say, chef solo and never working with chef server. Um, if you've not heard about, again, like you're just doing chef solo, maybe you're using open source chef server, you maybe not heard about chef automate and one of the features that it does. So we do have a bit of a bias in the certification of like, you have to... Um, perhaps be in a larger organization or, you know, have more of these um, maybe larger problem concerns that kind of come with the whole scope of what Chef solves. And that, yeah, that feels like the, the one thing. Because I was thinking about, I was like, could we just give this to, you know, Frank, who was working at the University of Washington Tech Support? Like, could they give it to me and I would be able to uh, get there? I don't know. It'd be, it'd be a lot of work, you know. But uh, the Chef Prep activities those ones do a pretty good job of getting you ready like using chef you just might not know some of the nuance of the question some of those particular details i'm not sure it still requires um you know exercising your skills in in a particular environment i think yeah and the thing about learn chef rally too is that it's it's not meant to be you know complete or comprehensive right it's we kind of outline a scenario and then we walk you through it, but we kind of pick and choose like the things you need to do to achieve that scenario. Um, like for instance, like you'll never see a Burke's archive, you know, command run on Learn Chef Rally, but you know, it might appear in the certification exams, right? Um, but, but we found that people that are most successful with the exams are people that kind of have that real world experience. So maybe they've done some Learn Chef Rally, they've, they know how to use the docs. Um, they interact with the community and know how to get their questions answered there, right? Um, maybe they have coworkers that they, that they work with. Yeah, that's cool. And I think we always, uh, and I'm sure this happens on Learn Chef as well, we sort of reiterate the best way to learn Chef is just like learning anything else. It's to use it, to use Chef. The best way to learn a new language is to go and speak that new language. The best way to learn Chef is to go and practice it, go and use it in your day-to-day -day life. You know, I think that's, um, I mean, it's core to Chef. It definitely felt core to Ruby. So I know Creighton and Andrew, you mentioned your Ruby developers. Like, I remember the first time experiencing Ruby and learning cucumber um, and I was uh, it felt like Star Wars like in the first, uh, episode four uh, Luke Skywalker the blast shield goes over his face and there's this like ball that's just zapping him and he's trying to smack it with the lightsaber right and he goes this is impossible and I kind of felt that way the first time I didn't have like autocomplete um, for me when I was writing my recipes and didn't have that for my tests and I was like this is just gonna take forever I hate this um, and then, um, you know, you read some docs and they're like these primitives, you know, they have these primitive objects, like you can just use them whatever you want. And then, you know, you're like, I need a few more examples, please. Like, I, I don't know how to do it. And, you know, the best thing is to just kind of play with them, but you need examples to sort of like tell you how to play or show you how to play the right way to kind of get them working. So, uh, I feel like that's something, I don't know if you all feel similar, like with coming in 
learning these concepts, I just felt like uh, sometimes lost because so many choices, like you, Andrew said, wrap yourself around, like trying to figure that stuff out. I had that after the first, after the, after the workshop, because there was, there were so many different tools, you know, there was like knife to talk to the server. And then you had the, you know, the, um, the, all the other tools, um, like, like to generate a cookbook and, uh, and then the custom cookbook and all, all those different uh, things. The, um, but what's, that's where I was lost. Like just which, which tool do I, do I go and use and then which commands. And then when I went through the, training they all made sense again you know then now i don't know why i had a problem with it um before like why like now it just makes sense like this is the tool that you use for this and this is the tool you use for that um but yeah the uh you know you were talking about cucumber cucumber is one thing i, I never got i never got was able to ever to use very very well it was always frustrating but our spec was was awesome so that's why you know the the, the inspect is really nice but um yeah cucumber was i don't know that's just so much work. I don't know how, I've never seen, I've never met somebody who actually used it really well. But yeah, that's uh, yeah. Crate and let's talk later, because I eventually, the first gem I ever released was called Yard Cucumber, because I got so sick of trying to like, I had written, so, anyways, several definitions and how it works. It's like, it was regular expressions upon regular expressions all throughout my, I had to start documenting it. So I had to build a gem, like a, a tool to solve my problem, which was like a lot of fun, but um try to google cucumber and like you know try to find support for stuff no like the same way with like you know some other products we yeah like maybe chef or knife yeah, yeah chef or maybe a chef's knife like yeah. yeah or test kitchen you think like you're gonna find that and you're like mm, well i do know how to cook pork about a little bit better now but i didn't find a solution to my problem mm, should i salt before um I, I had trouble with chef when just even teaching, we're gonna now execute the chef command, um, chef the company with the chef command to do the chef stuff. You mean things is good? They all like have kitchen stuff until Ohi. And then Ohi's like, where's Ohi coming from? And then they're like, well, it's from the meme. And then I'm like, okay, so like it, when you draw it out, it, it, it all makes sense and, you, and the tools are very easy and then you can, all, you can run the commands and then get help from them. And so you can, you can find it. But that was, the, that was the one thing, wrapped it all around like the chef tools. And then like the next one we learned was Ohi. And it's like, okay, well, that's not has anything to do with cooking. And then like, and then there's Habitat. I'm like, okay, Habitat's really cool. Um, yeah, but I, yeah, I still haven't yet to figure out how it fits into Automate yet, uh, but I'm hoping that there would be a course on that, you know, at some point added, but I do get how cool it is. Um, yeah, well, we're gonna have some more courses on that coming up soon. So watch Learn Chef Rally, like we're working on one right now. I think what we learned, uh, Thomas, what you were saying uh, from the, what is it, the, um, uh, the, quick, uh, the, the quick start one, that's now the setting up Chef Automate, right? That's super easy. Um, and we saw a lot of value and a lot of traction with that. Like people are really getting involved with that. Oh, Creighton, you were mentioning like how easy it was. That's right. And uh, so we're trying to look at that format or that model and trying to create some more examples and one for Habitat particularly. So you'd be able to go in and have a very direct scenario that kind of like, you don't have to install a ton of stuff, just kind of get the basic tools you need. And we'll show you like how it works and some of the awesome sauce, you know, of it. And, get a just a taste of it. I did see a YouTube video where somebody took a used habitat with um Kubernetes and a um Google Assistant to um to get all three of all three of those things working. So that one is that one was fun to watch. Like, if you haven't seen it, you should definitely check that one out. Yeah that's Kelsey Hightower's uh Chef Conf uh demo that he gave. Yeah we'll be sure to include a link to that in the show notes. That's awesome. Hey, so I have one final question before we start to wrap up and get onto the picks. Hard to believe, but like we're already almost at an hour. Um, so my question is, and, and maybe we'll just go around. Um, if, if you were to meet someone who's ready to learn chef today, what's, what's the advice that you have for that person on how to get started with learning chef? Um, and Andy, it's been a while since we've heard from you. And so I'm going to put you on the spot. So you get to answer the question. So it's actually a really good question because um, I'm going to have an opportunity on Monday to introduce somebody to chef on our team. 
And um, I, I think, and, and, you know, our team talked about it today. Um, the, the first thing we're going to do is really introduce Chef Rally um, and to get a good understanding of, of how Chef works before we dive into how we use it on our team. Um, and that's been my experience in both this role and my previous role is there's, um, there's chef, but then there's also understanding how chef is used within the context of, of the company. And, and sometimes, um, that, that takes a lot of learning too. And unfortunately there's very rarely a nice chef rally site to teach you all those things. Um, but, um, yeah, that's definitely, definitely where we're going to go on a Monday is start with chef rally and, um, kind of take it from there. That's really cool. And I think it's so appropriate. Like I think on learn chef rally and, and if you go to an instructor led training class with a chef professional, like the thing that we can be very good about teaching you is, is are or are the fundamentals of chef and how do you use chef? And the thing that is very difficult for us to teach you is how do you use chef in your work environment? Like that is something that you have to, you have to lean on your, your colleagues and, and your own skills and, and knowledge internally for that for sure. Frank, how about you? What do you think? Uh, so I want to learn chef. What's the best, which, what's your number one piece of advice there? Uh, I think my number one piece of advice would be go <clears throat> experience the pain. Um, go with the old man in me, the gray and the beard coming out. It would be go experience the pain of actually configuring a server to do something. Um, because that's the hardest thing that I feel like, uh, not that it, like when I taught chef, there were the people that it definitely felt like, oh my goodness, food, water, um, you know, civilization. Um, and they only felt that way because of, um, you know, some sort of thanks in the sense to the tool, like, I'm going to work with you a little bit. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt because they had the pain of like what they had before. And I'm learning that a little bit with um, Habitat is not all there for every core package that needs to exist in the whole Unix world. So occasionally you have to go build one and uh, you ha that's pain, right? To go figure that stuff out. So uh, I, it's making me appreciate things. So I encourage you to go experience some pain, set up a server, try to do Apache installs, uh, set up a LAMP stack without Chef and then do it with Chef. Tell me what you want to do next, right? That's cool. How about you, Tom? Yes, I would definitely hit up the getting started track first because it's a quick read and it's a really easy way. Well, you learn how the site works and kind of get oriented to it, but it's a really easy way to kind of earn your first badge, right? And, and get in the site and get, um, part, you know, participate. Um, and then I would move over to the infrastructure automation track, right? And um, that really gives a great breadth of how Chef works. And, you know, you can kind of learn like what a cookbook is, what a recipe is, what a resource is. Um, you learn a little bit about Chef Server. Um, you learn about local development, right? So I would do that next. and then pick a problem like in your workplace that you think that you can automate or solve with Chef, right? And, and see how far you get and kind of note what questions you have or kind of see what, what blockers you find. And then you can come back to the site and kind of see if there's any content there that'll help you kind of move forward with it. And if you don't find what you need, like let us know and we'll add it to our backlog. By the way, that's training at uh, chef.io is, is who, to, who to email if you have any, anything you want to see. That's awesome. That, and is there a feedback that email? form that or something email? right on the site as well? It, it's right on the page too, right? But I mean, okay. often it, it's difficult if you have like this like off the wall comment about something you'd like to see, like where do you put it, right? So things like that can go to go over email for sure. Cool. And Creighton, what's your advice for someone new to Chef getting started? Well, as a developer, um, I, would, I would point them to InSpec or Kitchen because both of those are magic for me because of just how easy they were. Like kitchens just like to test all the different platforms and to test your cookbook. Um, it, it, it's fun and then you destroy it and then you converge it and then you destroy it. And you can, then like, it's like, I don't even care about these things anymore. They're gone and then you, you know, recreate. It's just awesome. It's just a lot of fun. And then on the inspect side, um, we're kind of approaching security as, um, you know, if you don't want to use Chef, you know, from, a, from our, you know, our, our system admins or our developers, if you don't want to use it, that's fine. We're still gonna we're gonna use Inspect to you know test the server and if you have problems here's a cookbook that you can use to resolve it or like Frank said you know go do it yourself and tell me how that works for you <laughs> like there's there's you know there's a lot of value there right like you creating value but you also like hey you know here's all these here's 250 tests that failed but here's a cookbook that you can apply that fixes all of them which one and it just drives adoption right 
or pain, like whichever one you want to do, right? Whatever the person's happy with. <laughs> That's great. No, I think that it, uh, you know, you talk about kitchen and converge, destroy, converge, destroy, converge, destroy. And like, that is really starting to get you into that mindset of this is infrastructure that's throwaway because, because it's been automated and I can repeat the same process over and over again. And it is, it's both getting into that mindset, but also getting that practice under your belt. I've been thinking a lot lately about how to get started with Jeff and Creighton, I'd like to kind of pick up on something you said around the inspec. I feel like um, one of the approaches that you might have is to take a, a server that you already have running somewhere within your environment and just start writing some inspect tests to validate that that server is working exactly the way that you want, right? And you can, you can easily do that, execute it remotely against that, that running server, and then start thinking about, well, how would I write a recipe or a set of cookbooks that would bring a, a server from from fresh, if you will, from ground zero, right, all the way up to exactly that. So I think that's that's a, a, a cool new approach that we could think about looking at that I think uh, would be easy to get started with. But I also think, and, and this is so important to everything that we talk about at Chef, and it also comes sort of out of that Ruby community, uh, it's so important that it be fun also. And I think that really writing chef, writing in spec, and having this, this practice and repetition, like it can be super fun. All right, well, I am, I'm afraid that we are just about out of time. We have time left for the picks. So the picks is the end of our show where we're gonna go around the horn and we're gonna ask each one of our panelists to recommend one or two or three things that they think our listeners would be interested in. It can be anything from a technical topic all the way through to a whiskey that you love or whatever, anything that you like. Uh, so we'll go back in reverse order of what we just went. So Creighton, that means you get to go first. Okay, all right, so one of the things I'm working on now um, from a technical standpoint is using Zappa and Flask to deploy to um, Amazon Lambda and API Gateway. So Zappa is a is pretty cool piece of technology. So I would recommend listeners go check that out. Awesome. Tom, like, let's go to you next. Like Frank Zappa? Wait, I just want, is Zappa with two Ps? Yeah, Zappa like Frank Zappa. So like, you know, they got good taste in music. And then um, it's like Zappa IO, I think is what it is. So um, it basically takes the Flask app, uh, gets the dependencies for um, Amazon Linux, and then pushes everything to, to a, a Lambda and then does an API gateway proxy to it. So um, then there's things that you can do like uh, Alexa skills, you know, you can do, you, there's a there's blog post on how to do that on Amazon. Um, but it's really interesting, you know, um, being able just to deploy and not have, um, you know, not have anything that you have to patch or, or log into or anything like that. Cool, I brought uh, three quick picks. Um, one's a beer, one's music, and one is a steel chair. Um, so I've been drinking a lot of sour beers lately. This is um, anything that says Goza or um, Berliner or Flemish, I'll probably like it. And um, this is uh, some dogfish head that I have. You can find it most places. And as a bonus, you can put it in your Learn Chef Rally koozie and off you go. Uh, I am a huge fan. I always have and always will love the Melvins. So I just wanted to show off uh, their new album. And I was fortunate enough to go see them um, the other week. They were close by and I got autographs. That's super cool. And um, I'm a huge wrestling fan. Anything wrestling in WWE is, I, I love it. And um, WrestleMania this year was in Orlando and I was able to walk away with a steel chair. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. <laughs> so Frank, over to you for some picks. Uh, I got one one and only one pick. As a small child in Virginia, I used to stay up late because my parents would let me on Saturday. Um, and we would occasionally get to watch either Saturday Night Live or WWF. Um, but actually, I, I don't remember if it was on late at night or whatever, but like that was my life. Um, but I was a bigger fan of the show Glow, which was the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. And I know, Thomas, we were talking about this earlier before the summer. I kept saying, like, did you know that show's coming to Netflix? I mean, I used to watch it when I was a kid. Um, it was just such an awesome, like, show back then. 
And Netflix did a great job and they put together a really cool show. It's like a, you know, a drama in like 30 minutes or less. That's like funny, um, uh, incredibly funny. And it's related to gorgeous ladies wrestling uh, and growing together. So it's really a young golden girls, if you would. <laughs> All right, Andrew, over to you. Awesome. So I have three quick picks. Uh, I have one that uh, my my colleague and friend Sean recommended today, which is a tabletop game called Rhino Hero Super Battle, which looks like a lot of fun, and it's on my wish list um, as a hint to my wife in case she is watching this later. And um, my other two picks are um, I yeah I saw somebody last week on the Chef Community Slack um, announced that. They had um, published a tool called Chef Umami, which is a test generator, which is really cool. Um, I, I've used it on a couple of cookbooks to generate uh, tests for, for some recipes that didn't have any tests at all. And um, I, I think it doesn't replace writing tests thoughtfully, but it's definitely a great starting point if, if you're working on something that doesn't have any tests to begin with. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. Ryan Franz, so big shout out to him. It's a really yeah. cool tool. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> And then my last pick is uh, PipM. So if I write, uh, or I, in my former role and in, in my spare time, I write a lot of Python. Um, and there's a tool called PipM, which is really cool. Uh, it's a packaging tool for Python. And it's um, from uh, Kenneth, who develops the request library for Python, which is also really cool. Awesome. And I'll close this out with uh, three picks of my own. So the first, uh, I I hope we get this out uh, soon enough that you can take advantage of it, is that next week we begin our, our round of community summits for the fall. So as a community, we'll be gathering in Seattle on Monday and Tuesday, which is October 2nd and 3rd, in New York on Thursday and Friday, which is October 5th and 6th, and then the following week in London on October 10th and 11th. So if you're in or near any of those cities, please go to summit.chef.io to get information and join us for one of those summits. My second pick is another conference that's coming up, but I'll give you a little bit more than three days of a heads up on that one. Uh, and that is the fifth anniversary of Configuration Management Camp EU. So this will be our, uh, that, that conference's fifth year. Uh, I think it will be the seventh edition of that conference, uh, fifth year in Ghent, uh, Belgium. There's been one in uh, Portland this year, and then last year there was one in Berlin. Uh, maybe there was one in Berlin this year also. I don't know. But fifth year anniversary, Config Management Camp. It's at uh, cfgmgmtcamp.eu. Uh, so check that out. And the call for papers or call for presenters is currently open. So if you have a story that you'd like to share, Ghent is a beautiful town. It's a great community of people that comes together to talk about configuration management. So I highly encourage that. And then my final pick for today, uh, it came up um, a couple of times here, and that's the Chef Community Slack. If you're not in there, I highly, highly recommend that you join that Slack channel, or sorry, that Slack team. And you can join it at community-slack.chef.io. That's where you can go to sign up to join that Slack. All right, well, thank you everyone for tuning in. We've talked about super battles. We've talked about WWE and WWF. Uh, and I think it has to do with age there, as which you call that and know that thing. Um, and of course, we've talked about the food fight, uh, the Get Your Food Fight badge before October 6th on Learn Chef Rally. The only thing you need to do is complete one module on Learn Chef Rally before October 6th. You'll have a food fight badge. And thank you all so much for tuning into today's food fight show. And until next time, chefs, keep it hot.